Hey everyone, this is Mr. Everything, and today I wanted to do a speed test, kind of a one-week review on the T-Mobile home internet. Uh, I will say right off the bat, it's a lot better than the Verizon DSL I have. Uh, that's very low speed. That's the point I'm going to do two real-time tests, or maybe a couple. Uh, speed, I'm going to start with the old DSL, so you get an idea of what I've had for 10 years. Then the the next test will be for the um, the gateway, so just directly on that gateway via Wi-Fi. So it'll be that connection, and then the speeds for that one, for what I'm getting right now. And then probably later in the video, I'll talk more about some uh, fooling around and some uh, the trying to get the best speed I can in terms of reception, because it's a lot different when you're dealing with towers and reception and gain compared to home internet with a direct physical line, then your only weakness or limitations would be dependent on your router because everything else should more or less be consistent up until you go to the broadcasting. So for this, uh, how I've been doing this, um, the DSL comes in through the kitchen, through the uh, phone jack. So I have the Verizon DSL modem and then I have it connected to an Airport Extreme, and then I have an Airport Express in this room. So I have good strength, but I don't know if anything could be lost in between. But I'll go ahead and start here. So that ping 40, I think that's about as good as it ever gets. It's usually between 40 and mid 50, sometimes even closer to 60. So not very good ping. I mean, I've always played video games on that. I mean, the only time I actually experience lag is whenever, that's the problem with the low bandwidth, if I'm watching a video, or unfortunately now, you know, you take a game clip and it automatically uploads, you can see how terrible the upload speed is, that'll kill all your bandwidth because it's all being used for that, so I'll get lag, even if I'm, like, say, matchmaking, and I scroll through Instagram because there's so much crap on there now with the ads and the stories and autoplay uh, shorts and all that stuff so that kills your bandwidth so even though the 41 milliseconds at least for me that's the best i've ever had i could live with it it was just that limited bandwidth you couldn't do anything when you're looking for a quick response time for gaming now you could do maybe like two 1080p video streams or something but for gaming or for if you're wanting to do something in real time this wasn't enough to work with So I'll just run this one twice because, again, these results have never really changed. Now there's also the fast.com and you can do the loaded ping, but I'm not going to focus on this one too much. So I think the advertised speed was like 7 down, 0.7 up. So, I mean, that's just awful, especially for, I think it's $105. Now you do get the phone package with it, landline phone. So that's about 2030, which isn't too bad, but 70 for this crappy internet that keeps going up in price and the speeds never get any better. It's much better to go with T-Mobile, at least for me. So now I'm on the T-Mobile. Um, I've tried the router or the gateway in several different spots. I was going with it in the living room by the window, but then it wouldn't be as strong of a broadcast Wi-Fi signal into the bedrooms. So I actually was putting, just moving around, and oddly enough, it actually works just as good, not even near the window in this room. So now I have 100% Wi-Fi strength in here, where most of the my devices are at. So that kind of, in a way, eliminates the need for a router. At least I have a good signal, even though the gateway itself doesn't have the best routing capabilities in it, it's still probably the best way to use it, because obviously if iPads and stuff, you can't use Ethernet. So I'll go ahead and start with this one. And right there, the ping's about the same, although usually, usually it's a lot better than this. So this is kind of good, because I have the static results or you know, archived results from before. So you can see that's the only problem with this internet is it's inconsistent. But I'm getting basically the same ping. Now there's more jitter this time, but 
the downloads better, the uploads what over 27 times better. That's actually one of the higher uploads I've gotten in this area without going uh, around town. So let me try it again. This is closer to what it usually is. It could be deprioritization. It's Saturday. Uh, I've only had it for a little over a week. Usually my best speeds are like, yeah, maybe 11 at night on a weekday. Um, maybe weeknights it might be different, but then it's usually more like 100, and it's like 18 pings the lowest I can get, and probably all night until maybe 7, 8, 9 in the morning. So being the weekend, maybe I'm getting a little bit deprioritized. But you can see that uh, the ping is almost always better than what the Verizon is. But there's more of a fluctuation. You can see that Verizon was 41 milliseconds ping each time. And here it can vary. But it's usually varying between what Verizon was. And then it can go way down to like 18 to 20. I'll do it one more time. And that's way closer to what it usually is at 24 mil. And again, I can do the loaded ping. I think it's usually between 70 and 120 milliseconds. I don't know how accurate all this stuff is, but I, I know performance wise, I tend to have a quicker response with this, at least now that I've kind of settled on a spot that seems to always get four bars out of five. Those uploads are actually the best I've had. So that's actually kind of nice for today, but that's the only problem with this is it's a little um, volatile. Those numbers always change, but they're always changing. No matter what, they're always significantly better than the DSL. So as long as there's no outages or ridiculously low ping times or anything, or I should say high ping times, I, I can't see how it, in any way it would be worse than the Verizon, especially when it's half the price. So then you can see the fourth was when I got the um, T-Mobile. So these are old speeds. A lot of these were home DSL. And then my old iPad that had LTE, I think I might have. I don't know where I would have did that at. But, so that was, I guess, the first day I got it. That was the best speed I've ever recorded. So that was 129 down, 23 upload. On this tower, well, you can see today I got 30. On a different tower, I got actually 50. But that's the best download I've ever gotten, and then those are the ones I just did right now. So that's all I'm going to talk about for speed tests for right this minute. Then I'm going to show some data from old ones. Again, probably not the most interesting video, but for the people that really care about this stuff, hopefully that, you know, this might have been enough for just showing it's better. But I'm going to get a little more in depth, and hopefully, if you care, then you'll still be here to kind of try and figure out what I'm saying. Now, after watching different videos, because I didn't know anything about uh, routers, and I'll talk a little bit about that. Since I started out, the best I had was 7 down, 0 0.7 up. I figured, why waste the time and money to invest in a router, a good router, or know anything about networking? Because no matter what I ever do, no matter how much money I spend, there's no optimizations. I'm never going to get better than that. So I never bothered, and now I'm seeing maybe I didn't have my old router set up the right way. I was just using the modem Wi-Fi. It was just G, and then I added the airport, so that had wireless N. And then since then, I got a newer modem that does wireless N, but I'm still using the um, airport. But I think I have it in bridge mode, so I'm doing everything through the modem router as far as I know so I never optimized anything but again the T-Mobile gateway isn't optimized either so it's kind of in that regard the same thing I don't have anything mess with servers or ports or anything because I don't know how to do any of that so this was the test I did and you can see again that uh, ping which wasn't too bad there and then the those ones weren't as good and I'll leave it really at that, you can see all that, but not much difference from the latency here, which was worse on the DSL. 
and you can see the pings are a little different i guess just each how each website does the test and you can see the upload is obviously significantly worse i guess just because it's so easy to max that bandwidth out that then you get more delay which that's not very good either but um, unless I'm actually uploading a video, that 12.8 is probably more than enough between that and 30 that I got today. So that's that test. I don't know much about it, but I'll just leave those numbers there for you. And the next thing I want to talk about is an experiment that I did. Now I'm in an apartment. I'm on the second floor, which is the highest floor. I had to learn if the cell map or website, how where the towers were at, and I learned all that. There is one that's like a direct line of sight. I'm kind of up on a hill. It's like maybe two miles out. It's on a long straightaway. I can see it. That was a Sprint Tower, so it's T-Mobile now. I looked at how, I don't know how accurate the directions on cell map are, but it actually has an aim toward me. There's one downtown about probably a mile and a half away. So I found out where that's at. And that's the one that my um, T-Mobile app says I'm connected to. So I've been kind of learning about that. And uh, this is the easiest way for in your house, just if you have a Jackery or a power bank or an inverter, uh, I would not go and buy one just for this test. It's not worth it. Although I think you should have one on hand uh, for many different reasons. Uh, obviously uh, battery powered can't you know, power big appliances, but for a router, it would work. You could keep it plugged in. You can see I'm drawing 12 Watts. So that was, it's pretty good, at least for something like that. And it worked for this purpose instead of unplugging it and plugging it back in and waiting for it to boot up i could plug it into this and move it around the house and that's how i did that now there is a gps in here and you're not supposed to move it around but i'm thinking you know this was like one time i'm not going to be doing this every day or leaving it at a different address and i didn't have any problems but technically they could cancel your service but in a way i'm just kind of doing their r d for free for them so i don't see it being a problem for you know a few times if they would ever do tower maintenance or get, I'd get different speeds, maybe I'd try it again. But I drove around to the towers and took some different results, and I'll talk about those next. So um, as far as that, I just wrote that so I kind of remembered what I was doing. The 72 is the tower I'm connected to here at home, and 73 was the other tower that I was able to get to in town, which isn't that other one I talked about. This was some other one that I have to look that one up. Uh, I just wrote that down because it kind of cuts off the tower number. I don't want to have two screenshots. I really don't know too much about these numbers, so I did notice that this was probably half a mile from the tower, and it was pretty good there. And I'll talk about the speed test last because I don't want to take the time to edit the video to show both screens at the same time. Sorry about that. And then this was the 5G uh, metrics for that first spot. And then this one, I think I was even closer to Tower 72, but it must have been how they have it aimed that I connected to 73. And uh, I would notice because I've had a T-Mobile uh, unlocked iPhone for years that there's a pizza store there. And if I'd be inside waiting, sometimes I'd notice I have like full bars. So I'd run a speed test and I'd always get the best speeds I could ever get. And it was this is about probably across the block from that. So that must be the tower that I connect to down there which explains why the um, signal seemed to be stronger from what I can understand here. And this one had like insanely good upload, but the download wasn't as strong. So that's the same location, Tower 73, the best uh, 5G signal. And then this one was further away. This was closer to the old Sprint Tower, and the, the, but this one's still connected to the 73, so again, since it was plugged in, maybe it didn't switch bands that it would, or maybe that's how it, they have it aimed, that they still want that tower. But I actually had really good signals again. And I believe since my area just got approved for the 5G uh, T-Mobile service, even though my phone's always picked up 4G just fine, and they probably have had like some kind of out of range 5G, it seemed like from what I could read from that cell mapper, that the cone is kind of like a couple hundred feet, maybe quarter mile um, outside of where I'm at. So this is just right down the road. It's lower, so I'm up higher. But you can see that's actually the best signal I've ever got. And I had some pretty good speeds there as well. So 
hopefully, you know, maybe things get fine tuned a little more. I'm pretty much on the outside of where the last group of houses and buildings. So maybe, I don't know if they'll ever expand it to hit a little more here, but it's still pretty good. And then that was the 5G. And I've always been on N41 for the 5G band. I think that's like mid band or something that it uses 4G. So I don't fully understand. Um, I'm not all that familiar with it, but that's for someone that would know. And then I'm always on B2 for the 4G. Um, now this is going to be the last part of the video. This is just the results of uh, some tests I've done over the past couple of weeks. Just the, um, like the conclusion that fullness of the data I've done. So uh, I'm recording with my iPad, so it might not be as good. Now I know I could just screen capture, but I like to just do it this way. I don't know why, but uh, this was like right around maybe even the same day that I had checked again for the past two years, and I was finally it said that my area was um, approved. So I figured they either have a 5G antenna now or the signal here is better. And that's the best um, LTE signal I've ever picked up from T-Mobile. But I've never gotten it that high again, so I'm not sure. Like, that's that download's really good. I'm not sure if it was if I had done it a few times, if it wouldn't have got that high again, and it might have just been some, you know, fluke. But... That was, and this is the 11 Pro Max, so it doesn't have 5G antenna, it's just LTE. And again, I could do things, I don't know why, I just have a little post-it note like that matters, but I mean, I, we have Castle Doctrine here anyway, so I'm not too worried about my location. Uh, this was the first day. This is really, I think, I don't even know if I had it in the window yet, but the download was already better than most um, things. Ping wasn't very good there, though. And... Must have been... Oh, I have it written. So that was when I got it in the window. And that's closer to what I usually get here. So this was back on the phone service. And that was about... So you can see the ping's always consistently better with the um, T-Mobile gateway. Now, I will say Mint Mobile, though it uses T-Mobile, since it's a, I think it's called an NVMO or MVNO or something, I'm assuming you're probably always deprioritized compared to actual T-Mobile directly being a T-Mobile customer, but I don't know that for sure. But I kind of use it just for comparison's sake. So this was, uh, again, I took it with the Jackery outside to see what I could get. And those numbers, they've all gotten better in the coming days. So I don't know if they, if uh, yeah, there's probably not too many people around here. Maybe they care that much that they're going off of, you know, where I'm at or something. I don't know. Probably not. But I'm, I'm sure as more people get the service, they probably will build out that network a little more. Um, these were some of the best speeds. That's about peak uh, that ping never goes lower than that. And these were the results from yesterday. So that was that parking lot where I was pretty close to the tower. Good numbers. This was my cell phone on LTE Mint. Which again, so that was kind of, I figured out probably on that same tower. I didn't check on here, but it's probably the same tower. This was the one that had the best upload because this was that um, different tower. And again, you'll see that it, the ping never goes below that. But if you stuck around, which you probably haven't, you'll see that it's, that ping's always better than the DSL wired because it never seems to be able to go ever better than 40 milliseconds. And that was the phone. And that was uh, right below my house again. So that was, I think that had the best um, signal or gain. And that was the best ping. And the download wasn't as good there. But again, let's see, that was see, that was like kind of when school was out. So I'm not sure the more uh, people using the bandwidth, if that slows you down or that I'm still figuring out. So this was one weekend. This is where I'm at. I can't see myself getting rid of the service. I see myself getting rid of uh, Verizon. Uh, but 
I have uh, over the air TV antenna. I have a pretty good setup now, but in years past, if you didn't have a good antenna or a good um, location, um, changing weather would affect it, seasons would affect it. Uh, sometimes it just seemed like it would just randomly be in a different spot. So I have to hold on to this for probably six months, see if there's any differences or if it stays consistent. And if it does, then for sure I'm going to go with them. But as of this roughly first week, I'm pretty happy with the results. So these are all the numbers here for you to see if that gives you enough to make a decision or to know here in um, southwestern PA, about uh, 40 miles south of Pittsburgh, uh, how our network's doing here right now. And I'm going to come back with a test on gaming. Again, some people probably wouldn't like that ping. I think the upload and download's perfect for gaming. The ping, now 18 milliseconds, I think that's fine. But when you're using this router with the different NAT type, and uh, my Xbox ping's always way higher, uh, that's probably not ideal for gaming, but it does work. So I'm going to do the data on that next and show it. So if you care about that, uh, I'll have that video out next. And let me know if there's anything else I can do or inform you of or if you can inform me of anything. Um, it's a new service. There's a few others out there. So I just want to cover it and hopefully the point of these long-winded videos is to tell you as much as I can and let you know that there's a cheap and fairly, at this point, reliable alternative to no internet or really terrible DSL internet. So uh, thanks for watching and you'll see me in the next one. Have a good one.